all right you guys um, couple of things about this video one I haven't prepared I have no I, I have no organization in my head on what I'm gonna say and uh, so I beg I beg your pardon in terms of, of um, if it gets a little long I hope it doesn't get long because uh, I want it to go up today and I also hope my brain has some logic but as I have my cup of coffee this morning I've decided to try to address something um, which um, I see no upside for myself. Uh, I think I can be misunderstood. Uh, and and I might, I, unintentionally, I might hurt feelings, but I do not intend to. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do this in order to stop the hemorrhaging be blunt regarding CRTD and the ongoing I, I don't know what to call it uh, I wish I had a better vocabulary the ongoing uh, melee that's occurring on Twitter regarding CRTD um, I'm also going to talk quickly about GTII because I, I um, sorry, I'm trying to adjust both so that when I move things, it doesn't make noise on the video, but also so I can, if need be, read some some of the Twitters to you, the Twitter Twitterati to you. Anyway, let me quickly go on on uh, GTII um, without necessarily having to read anything I, d I think that GTII and you know let me look at the <laughs> let me look at the price but the uh, um, stock closed yesterday brilliantly and uh, I think um, I mean I, while I'm talking to you I'll sign in I knew I should have prepared better But the, the uh, thing about GTII is I think we're on the verge of a, I really think it's imminent, that we could have a squeeze. Obviously, nobody can predict the future. And, uh, well, maybe Nostradamus can. Um, but, sorry, there's some activity. But um, uh, the three catalysts to GTI are, are thus. One, um, approximately three weeks ago, some aggressive uh, counterfeiter, short seller, naked short seller as they call it, sold shares to manipulate the stock downward through the A California office at Westpac. When the margin got tough, when there was a phone call in, hey, you need to add money to your account. I'm paraphrasing, I'm making up the exact dialogue, but it was something like that. They decayed the trade. And so the, the, the firm was left with a two and a half to four million dollar error. It may have been the reason the stock went up to three in January, roughly, uh, because that firm would just buy in and close out the error. Now that gives you a lesson on what happens when the error account is used, when the buy-in comes, they buy. So they, they obviously, they could have made the error smaller if they had just waited to cover it now, right? Or theoretically. But that's not how brokerage firms think. They close it out. They want to know. Because it could be it could have been much bigger. And they never look back. They never look back. So 
That brokerage firm called the FBI. According to what I understand, the FBI said that they're on the trail, they think they know who the guy is, and he may be the guy that's calling and selling all over the country. Well, the FBI is serious. They're not, they're not uh, uh, weak wrists like Gary Gensler, who only goes after beautiful models who sell, uh, I don't know, they put their name on, on a crypto exchange, uh, Kim Kardashian, Lindsay Lohan. I'm telling you, uh, all of, for all of you that are looking for satisfaction from FINRA or the SEC, doesn't exist. I'll also caution you, if you're looking for satisfaction from certain lawyers, it won't exist. Um, uh, HPIL hired an attorney that you know, and it was done with much fanfare on both sides, the law offices, the CEO's desk. But these things work in the advantage of the shorts. They love it. They love it. And in fact, HPIL settled with the Kramers and all of their entities amicably, which meant no discovery, no real penalty. Uh, uh, the Kramers gave up their warrants, but what you know what else it meant? All those, I don't know how many billions of shares is quite possible of HPIL that the Kramers counterfeited. Uh, to nothing, the stock is now 0 0.00001 or 0 0.00000. No closing transactions, no 1099s, Kramers pay no taxes. So the cost of the attorneys, the cost of settlement is de minimis compared to the savings they did on their taxes. They feel like they're justified in this because for some reason um, they're just two young guys trying to make a living, but they're criminal in my judgment, they're criminal. And any lawyer that works with them should be ashamed of themselves. And the fact that the regulatory bodies allow this to happen, they should go hide their head in shame. Anyway, so number one, if the FBI frog walks Kurt Kramer, imagine that, or Charlie Mayo, or, or one of their underlings, that'll be all over every compliance desk in the country. That could happen any time. They started the investigation about three weeks ago. The second thing is this, um, this, uh, I gotta remember this number. This, of course, of course, of course. So the, the second thing is this, um, is this uh, 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 Alpine situation. Um, there's all sorts of going on and I'm not gonna go into it, but it looks like the guy's trying to leave his country, maybe with his daughter, maybe with a girlfriend, I don't know. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's a sketchy guy and uh, Alpine is sketchy. They own Scottsdale Securities. They, they have so many different arms and LLCs. They've got lawyers and investigators and, and fudsters and everything to make it work because for some reason, for their, for uh, what's his name, Hurry, for his short period on this planet, he's decided to be a criminal and bring as many, uh, uh, material things to his side of the table as possible. Well, I hope he's right. I hope it turns out that uh, we're born and we die and that's it. And life is all about how much you can steal from each other, how much you can hurt families, how much you can destroy the American dream and destroy companies. I hope that's, I hope that's it. And then when he's in the grave, it's all over. But if it's not that, I think he's going to have some answering to. And uh, that's not my, you know, mine isn't the place for vengeance. But his, his actions are deplorable. And anyone that works with him 
it's deplorable. But they have an attorney who has resigned in front of the D, uh, the judge uh, for the um, Depository Trust Corporation NSCC matter before the judge. And I guarantee you that is probably because that lawyer is manipulating the court, I'm in my judgment, to try to buy more time. I think time's up. I think it shows weakness. And uh, they continue to scam the stock price to, to strip money out every day. I don't know how Gensler allows it while he goes after Lindsay Lohan. But Gary Gensler is going to be proud of himself. He's already worth $120 million. So he's got to be proud of himself. And he's got daughters to look out for, remember. Remember, he's got a family to look out for. The rest of us out here, we're just schmucks. Well, anyway, um, uh, I think that comes to a head April 3rd. And uh, uh, the likelihood is that the judge is going to rule time's up and then Alpine is expelled because that's the what they're trying to avoid. FINRA wants to expel Alpine. Well, then where are the criminals going to sell stock? Where are they going to do it? Where's Kurt Kramer to be specific? And then Alpine and, and, their, and their many people they pay off in my judgment. Everything on this video is in my judgment. Where are they, where are they going to go? They're not. So it's going to dry up selling. And, at, uh, you know, apparently they, they started a, a market maker now selling from Nigeria. I'm sure I, you know, I'm sure Nigeria is a great country, but its reputation for uh, uh, scams is pretty high. But again, Gary Gensler is distracted by the hot chicks. I don't know what's on his mind. Um, he's certainly not protecting investors and rooting out uh, corruption wherever it is. Okay, so that's the second thing. The third thing is that Wes Christian's lawsuit, he's a different breed of lawyer. Um, when he hears about short selling, he doesn't, naked short selling, he doesn't blame it on the computers. He doesn't blame it on the fact that uh, the regulatory agencies are behind the algorithms that Ken Griffin created, which may be true. No, what, what Wes Christian says is, down in Texas, we call it stealing. And he, he, he uh, lets on as how his father used to tell him, if they can afford the fines, they must be making a lot of money. Well, Wes is not gonna, set, not gonna convince his client to settle early for a settlement, make an amic amicable arrangement with uh, Kurt Kramer. He's not gonna do it. I hope the, the settlement talks are whether Kramer goes to Rikers or he goes to that prison down in uh, uh, New Orleans. That's what I hope. And I hope it's whether he's in solitary confinement or he can have a, have a bunk mate. Not about getting off scot-free. Wes will take this to discovery. Okay, so those three things. Are the, are the reasons that I see GTI going up maybe very soon because all three of them together, or even one of them, is going to put data on compliance officers' desks where eyeballs look at the situation, not computers, and they're going to say, we can't take those. Even in the criminal organizations, they're going to say, we can't take orders regarding GTII anymore. And in fact, there will be honest uh, uh, brokers that say cover our position. All right, that's all I want to say. I think watch closely, make sure your, G, your good to cancel orders are in. I think we're in for a rumble with GTII and it could get really exciting. But I want to talk about CRTD. First, I want to see if I can sign in. So I can give you a quote. I can't, I can't sign in. It's impossible. Okay, so I'll go to, I'll give you a delayed quote. I'll give you a delayed quote. I can give you the bid and the ask. I 
I'll give you the bid and the ask. Um, GTII is trading at 217. The bid is 220. Ask is 221. So this, I think, uh, 220, 225, maybe 230. That's the breakout point. You've got um, uh, this new one from Nigeria on the on the bid, TLSA, Vert, um, OTCX, GTSM, all on the bid, Citadel, Citadel, and then you've got. TLSA, the same one, I think it's from Nigeria. On the offer, GTSM, Vert, OTCX, Knight, and Citadel's down a little bit further. But you've, um, there's no volume on the ask. The only one that shows that they're communicating is GTSM. Uh, they are bidding 1,392 shares at 220. So pay attention to GTII. Okay, I want to talk about CRTD. I've never seen anything uh, more confusing and perplexing than what's going on with CRTD. I owe each of you an explanation because I was a strong advocate for CRTD and I was simply wrong. I was totally wrong in the short run. I was wrong in the short run. What I couldn't account for is decision-making and um, style, I guess, approach, but I still have confidence in Jeremy Frommer and in CRTD, but I just want to go, I may, I may be able to find it quickly, but I, I'm just amazed at some of these tweets. Um, I'm going to go to some of his tweets and replies. I'm not trying to pick on him at all. I just want to air it because I think it's time to stop this destruction of value in CRTD. We're in the unfortunate position, me too, being down 95% in the stock because of what looks like a perplexing at the minimum, idiotic at the maximum decision to walk away from a hundred million dollar acquisition um, to go and simultaneously statements like I want all the I want all the hot money out of my stock I want everyone all the pump and dumpers out of my stock why that makes no sense you know you're gonna as if for those of you who are in MMTLP and as you learn about oil and gas and talk to others that know more than I do but there's a terminology when you drill a well, uh, they'll ask you, does it have energy? And, and the first thing you go is, well, of course it does. It's got oil in it. But no, that's not what they're talking about. It's like a Coke bottle. If you open the Coke bottle, there's all that carbon dioxide in it, the fizz, and the Coke bottle comes out. That's how oil wells are. They need energy, they need gas to bring the oil to the top, like a Coke bottle. Sort of. Well, once the energy's gone, or if it doesn't exist at all, you've got to bring these donkey pumpers in to the oil well to get the oil out. And it takes a lot of effort. It's really expensive. It's hard to go. Well, that's what I feel like's going on. These investors who invested in GTII and, and are absolutely terrific investors, all of them, whether they're pissed off or, or quiet, terrific investors in GTII. They're the ones that took CRTD off the mat. Four cents and going into oblivion. And guess who? Guess who's given loans to CRTD? You guessed it, Kurt Kramer, 1800 diagonal, and the Lynn Partners. That's uh, Jeff Easton. Well, and by the way, one of the weaknesses and I told you I'm, I, I'm not quite organized in this, but one of the weaknesses of Jeremy Frommer's outlook is that he believes that the problem is the computers. He stated on a call that he does not see 
that the um, Kramers or even Jeff Easton are smart enough to create 300, 400 million shares counterfeit. Well, I beg to d differ. It says a lot of good things about Jeremy. He's seeing good in other people. He's seeing good in Jeff Easton, good in uh, the Kramers. And, and that's fine. I mean, that's to me, that's what God is for. I can't see good in these people that are stealing from you and stealing the American dream, and they've been doing it for two decades. And then they whine and complain and go to their lawyer when the heat's when the heat is on. So uh, uh, I think it says a good thing about Jeremy, but I think it's naive. I think it's naive. I think uh, whatever it is in the DNA of uh, Jeff Easton, Philip Vallier, uh, uh, Kurt, and Seth Kramer, they want. They will just strip and strip and strip. They will crime and crime and crime until they have it all. And uh, and they love it. They love it. It makes them feel great. But um, I forget what I was saying. It's just a blind spot he has, and I think he'll learn. Um, you know, offsetting that, you have to know that Jeremy is the one CEO who stood in front of New York and spoke out against, against this, these crimes in front of everybody there, bankers, uh, uh, brokers that could help him, uh, institutions that could help him. So he has courage. He is fighting this fight. He's just, uh, and he stated that he wants to crush the effing shorts. So um, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding going on here. And it looks like, um, I better read some of this before my, I'll just read one. Here's one that was written to Jeremy. Thank you, I have, and that's all because GTI community brought me to your company. I'm still a shareholder. I think where you went wrong is accusing some in my community of being pump and dumpers. I think you owe them an apology. No, no disrespect to you. Jeremy, my apologies for all those investors in GTII that feel slighted from my truthful responses. It is an unfortunate byproduct of one of my uh, personality traits. I am a practical person. If my company, my family, and shareholders are attacked, I will be transparent. Well, I'm, I'm feeling that Jeremy's unintentionally attacked GTII, and that's why I'm doing this video. It's probably going to be shorter than I want because I got one percent left on this, on this uh, computer, on my battery. Um, but now Jeremy emphasized created and the lead product, flagship product, vocal. I agree with him. Um, he wants the pumping and dumping to stop. I don't think there's pumping in this stock CRTD. I don't think there's dumping. I think there's a legitimate people said, what the heck is going on? I'm out of here. I don't, I think he's misreading it. Uh, he's saying fake information and a bully. You literally don't know what you're talking about. You are the reason this space manipulates retail. I don't even have to consider a re reverse split until June. And the record, and for the record, my goal is to raise money on the OTC from a key group of investors. There you go. Uh, Jeremy says, I respect that and have literally said it's a great short squeeze play. He's talking about GTII. Many investor crossovers. But when I see people comparing us, let or no attacking my company, I will ruthlessly defend my position. Okay, so I'm trying to defend a little, because I think there's some misunderstanding here. Uh, Desert Voice says, Jeremy, you've been aiding the hostility and division, which seems counterintuitive for your idea behind CEO Block. What you said did not affect the original investors. We've done our DD and know why we're here. We are here for stock settlement in GTII. Jeremy says, of course they do. Read financials. How do you think they pay lawyers, accountants, CEO? They have a burn. Any company not cash flow positive has a burn. 
I plead with individuals to read and get educated about the Q's and the K's the company put out. He's talking about GTII. Jeremy says, if you're only in CRTD because of GTII, don't be. If you believe in each company independently, you should hold them both. Jeremy says, I am thankful you are a shareholder of CRTD, but there are no keys to a castle and just two companies that in the end didn't make sense together. But I have learned a great deal about hostility and lack of unity in combating causes which affect all investors. Uh, Christopher Walker wrote, probably not the best place for you to negative comment on GTII. Since you opened the door, GTII's biggest asset is 300 million imminent squeeze pricing. Uh, lawsuits, pending business, you have, you've had backers support. Could, uh, you could have had the keys to the kingdom to do as you wish. I own both big. That's Christopher Walker. Jeremy Frommer, I wish that were true, but the best ways for people to stop fighting is for them to know the truth and what we're fighting about. As a founder of CEO Block and part of the why CEOs join is because they know I don't fear calling it as I see it. I, I agree with that. We will stop, we will use our platform to champion transparency and truth. We will stomp out false narratives and misunder if information. Um, Jeremy, the hostility I've seen for answering a question truthfully is very disturbing and it goes to a cult mentality. The original tree made a false statement about how would we would be flush with cash. I said there is no cash on GTII's balance sheet. That is a fact. It's not quite a fact, but his point is, I think it's less than a half million dollars. But be that as may. Remember, GTII really doesn't have a massive burn rate. Um, Jeremy, as I have looked further into this, and this is a guy that needs to learn at his own pace. He won't take it from a guy like me. I've been saying it on, on these shows, and so is Ham. But the fact that funds are using a loophole to avoid paying taxes on their shorts is atrocious. When will it end? Uh, IRS, the closed position rule is a license for thievery. Exactly. Jeremy wrote, we have, it's about CRTD. We have already been delisted from NASDAQ. We don't have the, to reverse split right now. In fact, we refused to reverse split and took the bullet. That's why we got delisted. The challenges on vocal media help amplify our message as the creator home base. And that is something, that, that's the value here. Okay, three days ago, Jeremy said, I have often, I told GTI management what a deal, what deal would work. So he was, he was negotiating, that's his right. And that it would be conditional on financing for the combined entity, that's also his right. In the end, they are focused on their other deal. I wished them and all their shareholders the best. If they are interested in revisiting its transaction, he's, He's uh, open. Jeremy said, I don't know. I haven't studied every reverse split. I have studied a lot of them. But I can tell you there are many companies that if they did not reverse split, they'd be kicked off the NASDAQ like CRTD was and drop like a stone on the OTC like CRTD. All right, I'm just gonna start talking because this is gonna expire. But before I do, I'll give you a quick quote on GTII. The, um, the bid is 222 
and the ask is 223 we're we're starting to roll let's just look at CRTD Thir 13 5 to 1449 last trade 138 okay I just want to finish up and I and I and I'll do another video the reason I came on to do this video is I want to support CRTD. I want to support Jeremy Frommer. Um, uh, I think he made, uh, perhaps, it's always easy to judge in the background, ba backward looking. He perhaps made a mistake announcing so early that he was going to get out of that merger. But remember, his lawyers may have told him, you know, that's a material fact. You have to tell all shareholders. Uh, that was a shock. Uh, as recently as that, uh, more late, sort of 11, 1130 that day, I had reaffirmed uh, from my sources that the merger was going through. <laughs> so it, sh it caught me unawares or unaware. Is it unaware or unawares? Uh, it caught me uh, by surprise as well. The devastating selling that went on, uh, crushing selling, it hurt me, uh, uh, makes the climb back up particularly difficult. And that's one thing I don't think Jeremy is appreciating. These investors, as he calls them pump and dumpers, I don't think he's right, but maybe he has a reason. I don't want to speak for him for, you know, he may have a reason. They help bring the energy into the stock. And at the time, GTII had, uh, sorry, CRTD had almost 400 million shares. And, and then Tom Ronk did a study, 375 million shares counterfeited. Now, I, I, uh, at that time, there was only 30 million shares outstanding for CRTD. Since then, um, the cost of financing back in September with the same whales that are in GTII we found out the cost. It added a lot of stock. I think that insiders of the company were awarded shares. So we're now at about almost 90 million shares outstanding of CRTD. But there's still 400 million in the short. So there's still that massive potential for a short squeeze. Now, what are the risks? You've got a CEO that really doesn't believe that... Um, Well, he, believe, he wants to crush the shorts. That's the strength. And he's working, unlike a lot of people, he's putting his reputation out there, his name is out there, he's taking the, the slings and arrows, and he's fighting. And you can't take that away from him. Um, but uh, he has admitted uh, to the fact that he believes it's the machines, not the people, probably that the machines are set up just to fill orders. When the volume of retail buying came in, uh, they created fails to deliver just to handle the volume. You know, I'm, maybe I'm the one being naive, but if that were the case, why is it, aren't the stocks flat to up? They're all crushed. Every time a company signs a deal with criminals like Jeff Easton and uh, his team and Kurt Kramer and his team and Yorkville Advisors, as soon as it's signed, before it's signed, the stock starts going down and afterwards it's crushed and then they're trapped. They seller box the stocks and uh, Gensler doesn't care anything about it. But anyway, um, uh, CRTD has been crushed and that makes it really difficult to go back up. It, the, the, it's, just, it's just devastating when you're a dollar 70 and now you're 15 cents 13 cents to go back to a dollar 70 is a massive task and I I think I might have tried something communicating differently but guys you do not know uh, what uh, factors that Jeremy used in the decision to announce on that Friday you also don't understand and I don't either what are the what are the uh, parameters that he feels that he has to honor to um, to implement 
his responsibility as CEO for the best interest of shareholders, the best interest of his employees, and the best interest of the long-term viability of his company. You don't know. Um, I think Jeremy was transparent on several calls, uh, even in press releases that he was negotiating. The, the deal was announced, but he said that he was had gone back with a counter offer. So I think he's being honest. I think he's being transparent. Um, but I think it's a, it's a difficult task. I think the energy has, to use that analogy, the energy's been taken out of the stock uh, from some of his tweets. He, he wants all of that energy out of the stock before he sets about, uh, you know, the difficult climb back to a dollar. I think getting to a dollar now is going to be the difficult climb, much less a dollar seventy. That's because there's so many shares outstanding they, uh, now. And um, okay, let's just stop that point and start a new point. What's one of the difficulties now? One of the difficulties is that CRTD may have something to counteract Jeremy's point. What does GDI have? What does GTII have? Which kind of negative, but it's also um, telling the truth as he sees it. Well, <laughs> what, GT, what CRTD does have is 17 employees. They have a burn rate. They need money. And if you don't think the shorts are watching this and know that we're playing right into their hands, that's Jeff Easton, Philip Vallier, who smiled on the press release. That's the Kramers and all the rest of them joining in. They see, they know that uh, Jeremy's gonna run out of money and then he's gonna have to do a deal. We're at 15 cents. Where do you think a deal gets done if it's done now? I don't know, seven cents? It's dilutive. So the, the, one of the problem is there's gonna be dilution in this stock. But let me say the positives of that. And you, see, and you saw it in that tweet, and it's something if I speak to Jeremy, uh, which I'm, I'm not saying that I will, that I would emphasize. I think that Jeremy can do an offering, an honest offering, a plain vanilla offering, a, a no trickery offering, hopefully without warrants and, and without things like that, but you you can issue stock as units, stock and warrants that are private, not trading, uh, or they trade later on, but you can do it with honest investors like retail. So that's the, to me, that's the way path forward uh, for Jeremy. And I think I'm very optimistic about that path forward. Okay, new point. I think Jeremy has a strategy. Um, I don't think he walked away from the deal with GTII just because it didn't make sense. I think he has alternatives in mind. Okay, new point. The core investors in GTII, the whales, are still with Jeremy. So I think it means that there could be a merger still or there could be financing that is honest to Jeremy. Let me just make a corollary on that point. Remember when Jeremy announced that the warrants that the whale investors got at, I forget what price, they decided to exercise them at 20 cents below market? That brought in cash. To my memory, is $400,000. That might buy enough time for, for some of the other plans to get imp implemented that gets the stock price up. But I, want, I just want to teach you something uh, or teach might be the wrong word, but I've always noticed that when whales come in, they try to get a discount, they try, they think they're doing something good. When there's an arbitrage from 60 cents down to the exercise price of 20 cents, in my experience, for what it's worth, the market always, the market always brings it down to that. So it was unfortunate, um, but it brought money in. And this, you know, this is not a science. This is an art. And uh, uh, I think Jeremy deserves a chance to e execute his plan. And uh, uh, 
I, I, I met him. I find him honest. I find him caring. I, I, I think it is a little bit unpredictable, um, perhaps, to see these one or two decisions he's made, particularly the decisions to say some of the things he said on, uh, on Twitter. But on the other hand, on the other hand, it's transparent. You're getting to know him. It's consistent. So I, I'm, I'm going to write this all off as a learning process. He's still in the fight, and he's there to make it. Now, let me tell you, um, it, it'll be my sign-off. I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think that now is the time to be nibbling, buying CRTD, not selling it. I've already admitted to you that to go back to $170 a share or $5 a share or $10 a share is going to be, is going to be pretty difficult in the short run. This stock had a heart attack. Um, as my kid sister used to call it, it had a heart attack. And uh, when she was little, she was four. Um, uh, a patient who has a heart attack doesn't get up and run a marathon right away. But let's go through the positives. It had a heart attack two or three weeks ago. A lot of the selling is gone. So now the recovery starts. The recovery starts. One. Two, I believe that the OG collection distribution is valuable. There's those of you who have told me there, there's not a, an appropriate uh, third-party investor. It's the same whale, so you can't trust it. I, I've met the investor, and he's sharp. He's smart, and he wouldn't have paid... Uh, the price he did unless he saw value there. He is He's an extremely smart financial mind in my judgment. So the OG collection was priced at, I'm gonna use round numbers, $10 million. Now, uh, just accept my numbers. You can do your own arithmetic. I'm using 100 million shares outstanding. There's less than that, less than that but there's gonna be a financing. So at 100 million outstanding, $10 million valuation, that's 10 cents a share. The stock's trading at 13 cents. You're gonna get a distribution of the OG collection. I believe the record date's in April, I forgot to look it up, but I think it's the second or third week of April is the target. It's gonna be on upstream. It's gonna be a corporate action. It's gonna be right up the, the uh, hot spot of the strike zone for Jeremy Frommer. He's gonna hit the ball out of the park. He knows how to cause the back offices to feel the stress of delivering real shares. He's gonna cause a run on the bank for real shares because the only way you're gonna get that distribution is if your shares, your, your I don't know what to call it, a coin or an NFT or a whatever, but that blockchain distribution is going to have to be delivered to the transfer agent or to upstream but they're not going to be, they being the brokers firms can't stuff your account with counterfeit uh og collection blockchain i think it's terrific and and he said in a press release and remember if he goes if he says the wrong thing he can go to jail but he said in the press release that that OG collection could be worth seven to 10 times the starting price. I believe him, I believe him. And I believe that he got outside uh, uh, estimates. Well, if you start at 10 cents and it goes seven times, that's 70 cents just on that one distribution. He has other divisions he can distribute. So my point is a trade has turned into an investment and I think the smartest way from a money management standpoint, the trades bust, the trades bust. We're now in the investment phase. And I think by getting that distribution, you can recover your original investment. Um, let me just tell you on the one thing on the, the uh, OG collection, which is mostly pictures of um, what was considered to be beautiful women 50 years ago. 
I did a little bit of buying of art in my life, always, you know, always like an amateur, but I loved it. And, and um, what I learned from various dealers is when there's women, whether they're clothed or not, when women are in a painting, the painting tends to uh, uh, maintain its value or go up over time. I can't explain it. I mean, I bought modern art as well that just had circles and squiggles. But anyway, that's, I think, it, I think that content. I also had a client in Saudi Arabia that went to work for, he was younger then and a great guy, worked for ART, Arab Radio and TV. And the, the sheikh that founded that made his fortune on content. He acquired, uh, he acquired all of the old black and white movies and then launched ART and he made a fortune, billions. So content is important. So I think my, my first value point to you is the OG collection. I think you, rather than selling, you might consider, consider nibbling on buying. Okay, second point, mechanics. Maybe move some of your shares to upstream because that way you get that distribution for sure and you can learn how upstream trade trades my third point there are other divisions there are other strategies there are other ways to make corporate actions here which jeremy has talked about so i think there's going to be an ongoing effort to catch out the shorts four there still are four million uh, uh, criminally uh, sold counterfeit shares that could all come buying back in a rush. So don't give up on that, but just adjust your ex expectations. I think that this is going to be a bit of a, a scrimmage, a bit of a fight for six months, nine months, but the value is still there. The same investors are still there. So, um, I would, I would dampen your expectations on the original stock about how high it's going to go. Maybe maybe 80 cents a dollar, a dollar 20. But in the meantime, if you can get that distribution, maybe that's 70 cents a dollar there. So maybe you get back to $2. I don't want to be completely discouraging on the idea of a short squeeze. I think as Jeremy learns more about it, he's a man that has to learn. He has to see evidence. He's not going to take it from me saying that uh, uh, Jeffrey Easton is out there or, his, or Jeff's compatriots are out there selling counterfeit shares. How do I know? I don't fully know. I just see a pattern. The only person that could find it out is Gary Gensler. But Gary's more concerned with Lindsay Lohan and Kim Kardashian. I think it's because... Uh, blockchain is a threat to Wall Street. It's a threat to Goldman Sachs. I don't know. But don't give up on CRTD. I'm going to do more videos on it. Um, I remain a supporter of Jeremy Frommer. I may remain a supporter of CRTD. It has been a disaster in terms of stock price in, in the span of a, a, a fortnight. But the recovery will come. Uh, uh, I think there's value there. I think Jeremy is honest. He's doing his best. You don't know, and I don't know, the competing uh, uh, pressures on him more than just d d creating a short squeeze for us. In fact, a CEO's job isn't to create a short squeeze for us, it's to survive his company. I would, on our side though, on our side though, I think once a CEO knows that reverse splits don't work, once he knows that going to Benchmark Capital and Jeff Easton and Philip Vallier and Kim, Kim uh, D, I can't remember her name, and uh, going to the Kramers, those kind of places, once he knows or she knows that those places are issuing toxic notes, convertible notes, and they're just destroying your stock, I think it's better to dig in your he heels and be that fighter for your company, for your family, and for your reputation that Jeremy is by not taking any of that financing. Stay off the exchanges. Walk away from anything they can manipulate you with. We'll be behind you, Jeremy. 
and I know this is a long video. If you've even watched it, I appreciate you did. But we, I will be behind you. We will raise money for you. We'll make it work. Stay away from Philip Vallier, Jeff Easton, Kurt Kramers, and any of those smiling uh, liars and manipulators. And if it's not they, it's the people behind them. Stay away from it. We'll get you across uh, the river uh, the, the, now that the bridge is down, but we'll get you across to the other side and, and we'll climb into the highlands. I'm not as, I'm not as poetic as uh, Martin Luther King or somebody, but we'll get there. And uh, anyway, I wish you the best of luck to Jeremy, to all CRTD investors. Right now, I think GTII is the place to be. Um, don't give up on CRTD. More will be revealed. Thank you for listening. Ciao.